Hey guys, in this video we're going to go ahead and rebuild this Gould pump. From start to finish we're going to replace all the bearings, all the shafts, all the seals, everything inside. So go ahead and stay tuned. Alright, so to begin we're going to start by removing that coupling unit. Um, this one is a jaw style coupler, so what we're going to do to begin is just uh, remove the set screws that hold in the keyway and lock these couplers down to the shaft. I'm just going to remove both sides. Make sure that there's not double set screwed. I believe this one isn't, but it's always a good thing to check, especially when you're out in the field. Once they're loosened up, we're just going to slide them back and then pull out that coupling unit, that rubber coupler. And now we're going to take off these four outer bolts. So now we're just going to disassemble that coupler and slide it off the shafts. You want to make sure that you don't lose your keyways at this point. Maybe just try to keep all that stuff together. Okay, so now after we get the coupler off, we're going to go ahead and start removing the pump from the base. Um, this should be just three bolts that hold it down and you should be able to pull it off. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and rig this thing up. Uh, I decided to sling the put the sling through the top cross members here, but you can. There's probably a couple different ways you can do it. You can choke it. You can basket it. Um, this is just the way I decided to do it this time. It seemed to work all right. Um, but now I want to mainly point out when you're lifting it that you're kind of slowly bumping the controller so that it goes up slowly. That way, if it's going to tip over on you or it's going to um, slide to one side or the other, it's not a, a very fast motion. Okay, so make sure when you're picking something up, you just kind of go slow. All right, before we get too far, I wanted to maybe stop and remind you to make sure you drain all the oil out of it. The box was empty when I started making this video, so I didn't have to drain mine out, but it'd be very smart to drain it out before you remove any of the shafts or any of the other parts. What'll end up happening is you'll have oil all over the table and it'll just, it'll be a nightmare and it'll be a much bigger job to clean up. So take the time now, drain all the oil out, um, maybe even while it's hanging from the crane, um, and then go ahead and continue. So what we're going to do next is I, I decided to loosen up the bolts on that back plate first. I felt that I just wanted to get them out, get them onto the, the table. That way I didn't have to deal with them later. And then I went ahead and moved up towards the front. So we'll go ahead and fast forward to get there. So the part that has those two flanges connected to it is typically called the balute or the impeller box. Um, that's pretty much where the impellers house all the water or material that you're going to be pumping flows in and pumps gets pumped back out. Uh -huh. uh, there should be four bolts that hold this on. We're going to go ahead and pull those off and then continue. So after I got the bolts out of the volute, I went ahead and separated them. I was able to just lift up the stuffing box and pull them apart, but you might need to put like a piece of wood underneath it just so it doesn't fall if this is a bigger, bigger pump maybe. 
Um, after that, I went ahead and just used the one leg that was left and clamped it down to the workbench. That way I could easily work from both angles on it. So in this part, I'm going to go ahead and uh, break the impeller loose. What I've done is I've taken a pipe wrench and I clamped it onto the, uh, the input shaft of this pump. I'd rather not see you guys use a pipe wrench, but right now that's all we have. I'm working on getting one built that will uh, save those, save that impeller shaft, or I mean that uh, input shaft. But for right now, you can use a pipe wrench. Just be very careful with it. We'd rather not knurl up the end there. Um, and all I did is I take a pry bar, I don't know if you can see it very well, and I get it in between the impeller and just break it loose, okay? Um, and then I'm just gonna flip it around and I'm gonna take it off by hand the rest of the way. Um, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to remove the back plate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that I got the camera flipped around, I wanna show you that we're gonna remove those two back nuts that are located on those studs. And that should be all that's really holding that back plate on there. Now, you do need to come reach in with a Allen, Allen uh, hex head, I guess, I don't know, L ranch or whatever, and loosen up a part of that that mechanical seal. But we, we weren't able to get in there with the camera, so we just went ahead and bypassed that. Um, if you need help, just let me know, and I'll kind of come show you a little bit more. Next, I just go ahead and I slide off that back panel, or I mean the back yeah, the back panel, I guess we'll call it, and set it off to the side. There's also a sleeve in there that you're gonna go ahead and remove. It should come off quite easily, and you can see in this video that it uh, doesn't like to come off at all. That's how beat up this, this shaft is right now. So that's, that's why we're putting all new stuff in. When you're hammering the shaft out of the stuffing box, you wanna make sure you always use a rubber hammer. That way you don't damage any of your parts. If you uh, maybe don't have a rubber hammer, you can use a block of wood in between a steel hammer and the shaft that you're trying to move. But always look for a rubber hammer. If you don't have one, go ahead and buy one. They're worth your money. Um, next, I wanna show you that pretty much everything is connected to that shaft at this point. The, the box itself is pretty much empty. There's just some, we can maybe make sure we clean out that uh, sight gauge at this point if we have a second. And then we're gonna move on to disassembling the, the shaft itself and the shaft assembly. Okay, so in this section, I kinda wanted to really slow it down and show you guys how we actually went about tearing that shaft assembly apart. Um, and I want you to notice a few things as we go through, and I'm gonna kinda take it really slow is just notice how we have that shaft sitting in there right now so that the flange is kind of the only thing being pushed on. I want to point out right now that we also pulled out the, the snap ring before we got to this point. Um, if you don't pull out the snap ring, you'll never get that thing to push apart. And you'll even notice that the snap ring, somebody's tried a good few times to push it out and it just, it will not go. So make sure you take the time Move that snap ring or else you'll never get it apart. Now I'm also going to go down low and I'm going to hold on to that shaft that way when it finally does push out of the, the bore there it doesn't fall and hit the ground and wreck those threads on the other side. It just, it's just a double in your work if you have an accident like that okay. Take the time just, just hold on to it. All right, so now that I got the actual end cap off, we're gonna go ahead and uh, switch over and I'm gonna show you the removal of the nut for the first bearing there. And I'm just gonna show you how to take the, the lock nut mechanism off. And all I do is I just tap it back with a punch and then straighten it out a little bit. You could flip this up so it's straight up and down if necessary, um, but we were trying to, trying to show you with the camera. This isn't the most easy easy process so the nut now it it came off pretty easy with a set of channel locks all we did was just spin it a little bit and it came off really easy okay so we're back to the press and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna press off each of those bearings now each of those bearings are pressed up against a shoulder 
So you want to make sure you don't press them further on the shaft. You want to press them off of each end. And they both come off of either, or um, one comes off one end, one comes off the other end, okay? So it's not like they, they both come off the same end or anything like that. And we're just going to go through the same process we did with the end cap where I'm going to hold on to the bottom and we're just going to press each one of them out. See, I'm just going to take off that snap ring. We're going to make sure we put that back on when we go back together. But And we're just going to drop that deck down so that way we can press something that's a little bit longer. This is in slow-mo too. Or not in slow-mo, I should say. It's just in normal. And this one, though it looks like it's going to go a long way, it only has to press off that like one inch shoulder there, so it goes off pretty fast too. So be careful with that one. And that's it. The whole shaft assembly is apart. So in this shot, we got all the old parts right here, and then these are all the new parts. And the new parts include new bearings, new shafts, new nuts, new seals, new O-rings, and a new sleeve. Okay, so we're gonna replace this seal. This is our new one, this is our old one. What I've done is I've set up these two blocks right here, and we're gonna lay this down, so that way that seal can be pushed out the front and not hit the table, at least hopefully not. We're just gonna work our way around that seal. Until it's hammered out. So the next piece we're going to take out is this seal down in here. This guy. Shut up that front side. Look at it. You can see this is the seal. It's all one piece. So we're going to go ahead and flip this over and knock it out. Just again work your way around the outside. It just pops right out. You can see that's our old seal. There should be another piece here, but it actually broke off ours. So we'll go ahead and throw that to the side. I'm going to take my steel wool again, spend some time cleaning up that bore. Just make sure there's nothing that seal has to work against. Okay, so we tried to hammer this seal in there and it just, it's too big and floppy, it wouldn't go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press it in now. And we're just gonna take a plate that is uh, at least as wide as that uh, seal is. So down on top of it. And then I got a block. Ooh, that's too long. So we're just gonna go ahead and extend the, oh. Get our block in here. Let me press that seal down. In. You want to keep a close eye on it. Uh oh, yeah. That way you don't crush that seal. That's all it took right there. It's three pumps. Yep. Just want to make sure it's perfectly seated all the way around, and that one's there. Okay. Putting it in.
start the press, back off, and then go back into it. All it's doing is letting it self-center. All we're gonna do is make sure that there's no space in between this bearing and that sleeve. That, that shoulder came all the way down. Okay. So next is the other side. I want to make sure we put that snap ring on first. Otherwise, you have to pull that bearing back off. Uh, let's see if we can get this. And again, just making sure that this is all the way down on that shoulder. Looks good. With this one, all we need to do is make sure that that snap ring can pop down into the snap ring groove. Uh, I think that's a little bit more. Oops. Like so. Okay, I didn't show me pulling this o-ring off, but we're gonna go ahead and put a new one on here I gotta get out of this packaging Ooh. When I like putting o-rings on I always put some put some lube on them, especially if they're gonna have to be forced into a A, a barrel pretty much is what's gonna happen here uh. Uh. Oh, good, okay. Okay. We're going to put a little bit around here, on the outside. Make sure you get that chamfer really good. That way it accepts that o-ring nice and easy. Want to make sure we put some on the inside of this seal in here too. We're going to actually add some to the shaft too just in case. Just in case. section done. So I'm going to go ahead and put those bolts for the back cover back in there. Now we're just kind of putting them in there loosely because these are the same adjustment bolts that will actually set the impeller to the correct clearance. So there's no reason to tighten them all the way down or get crazy with them, all right?
Put a little bit more white grease on the shaft here. I'm gonna slide this on. Make sure it's a nice, smooth fit. No hammering involved there. Face plate. Can you see this? Can you see that? No idea. Want to grab me a feeler gauge? One of you is? Well, the hard thing is getting this thing to be tight on there. On there? Yeah, we're sending Okay. So we're going to go ahead and set the propeller clearance. First thing you want to do is you want their gauge here. You're going to fit it in between the impeller and the back plate. Make sure that you know nothing's in the way there. And then you're just gonna start screwing down the jack bolts on this back side. Do you wanna go ahead and screw those down? So now we're going to go ahead and remove the pump from the table, or at least being clamped onto the table, so that way we can grab the volute and reinstall the pump housing into the volute here. Again, if you need to use the, the overhead crane to maybe lift it up or block it up with some wood, this time, kind of use those two back as aids. Now, I decided to put the oil back in before I reinstalled it, mainly because not always are you able to see the sight gauge, or sometimes it's in a really difficult spot, or maybe it's not even perfectly level. So I just went ahead and took some 8090. Um, that's what I believe this pump calls out for. So and filled it up to where the gauge was about halfway full. I've done it before it hurts. So I'm going to, I'm now reinstalling this pump onto the skid. Now the, the big difference between this and the real life out in the field is there's no, no uh, pipes hooked up to that volute. So it's pretty easy just to go set it down on the base. Um, typically you'd have to weasel it into a tight spot with seals in between there. So just kind of be ready for that. Now I just go ahead and I'm putting in the bolts and now all we have left to do is put that coupler back on. When putting the coupler back on, you just kind of want to make sure that you don't have any uh, burrs or anything like that holding it up. Make sure you slide in the keyway at the same time. It seems to be easier that way. And then I went ahead and attached the, or I actually put it on the first time without the bolts and figured out there's no way to get the bolts in after. So make sure you do that. And then I went ahead and just assembled it as shown.
One final thing I wanted to point out on putting this coupler together that you can kind of see in the video is that I made sure that the set screws and the keyways are 180 degrees out from each other. That's just a precision balancing technique people use. So, and it may be a test question in an upcoming test. So definitely watch out for that. So that pretty much sums up our video on how to rebuild this pump. So next thing you got to do is go out and get started on it for yourself. If you have any questions or anything I can help you do, please let me know.